Drew Baglino recently shared several extremely significant and exciting 4680 battery production updates, including a reference to what I believe to be third generation 4680 battery manufacturing equipment, confirmation on the retooling of Tesla's Cato Road pilot battery facility, and more. Stick around as I cover what Drew revealed and why it matters. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. As you likely know, the first Cybertrucks are planned to be delivered at an event scheduled for November 30th, and Elon revealed that Tesla plans to produce around 250,000 Cybertrucks per year, and according to Elon's best guess, Tesla could hit that production rate in 2025. However, in order to build any meaningful number of Cybertrucks, Tesla needs to massively ramp up the production of their new second generation 4680 batteries at Gigafactory Texas, which they also refer to as cyber cells, which as a reminder are 10% more energy dense than the first generation 4680 batteries. When it comes to the kind of production volume of 4680 batteries that will be necessary, according to my estimates, to produce 250,000 Cybertrucks per year will require around 342 million 4680 batteries, which equates to approximately 32.49 gigawatt hours. This estimate assumes that the Cybertruck will be equipped with an average 130 kilowatt hour battery pack, which would contain somewhere around 1,368 individual 4680 battery cells per pack and that each cyber cell holds around 95 watt hours of energy. In order to hit the 342 million or so cells that are needed per year to build 250,000 cyber trucks, this will require Tesla to build an average of 936,986 4680 battery cells per day. As of right now, Tesla is far short of that goal. However, they are making steady progress towards mass production. And during Tesla's Q3 2023 investors conference call, Drew Baglino did share some encouraging 4680 battery production updates that I now want to cover. During the call, Drew mentioned, quote, 4680 cell production in Texas increased 40% quarter over quarter. Congrats to the Texas team for producing their 20 millionth cell off of line one. Texas is now our primary 4680 facility. A 40% increase quarter over quarter is very significant and is once again a sign that Tesla is rapidly increasing the production rate of 4680 batteries. And Drew Baglino specifically mentioned here that the 20 million battery cells that they've built at Gigafactory Texas was off of line one. So that's a single line. This is really interesting to me because I thought this 20 million battery cells was for more than one battery line. When it comes to Tesla's rate of improvement beyond just that 40% quarter over quarter number, as I covered in a past video, from start of production to their first 10 million battery cells at Gigafactory Texas, it took 262 plus days for Tesla to achieve that. However, for Tesla to go from 10 million battery cells to 20 million battery cells, that only took around 117 days. If Tesla is able to half the time it takes to get to the next 10 million and half that time, etc., if that trend continues, you can see how that would affect the per day average. But nonetheless, as you can see, based on going from 10 million to 20 million and Drew Baglino's comments about a 40% production increase quarter over quarter, it's encouraging to see that Gigafactory Texas is indeed starting to really ramp up 4680 battery production. Now, beyond just the increase of production, Tesla has also been able to decrease the amount of scrap. On that topic, Drew said, we're heavily focused on quality. Scrap is down 40% quarter over quarter. With the increased volume and yield improvements, sell cost consistently improved month over month within the quarter, although we have a lot more work to do to achieve our steady state goals, and this is our priority. Lowering their scrap rate by 40% quarter over quarter is a very significant metric because if you have a lower scrap rate, that equals a lower cost of goods sold and a higher production rate. Sometimes it's individual components that get scrapped during the manufacturing process and at other times it's the entire battery cell that gets scrapped at the end if it doesn't pass the proper tests. 
For example, in this Gigafactory Texas image that was shared by Joe Tegmeyer on X.com, according to one of my sources as I talked about in a past video, these orange bins are for scrap electrode ribbons and my source made it clear to me that when breaking in a new factory, a lot of waste is normal. Do note that the scrap does get recycled, however, once again, a high scrap rate increases the cost of goods sold and decreases the production rate. Now beyond scrap rate, even batteries that make it through the end of the production process and are usable, not all of those batteries are suitable for automotive use. And battery factories grade their cells as A, B, or C grade, for example, based on the performance characteristics of those cells. Generally speaking, only A grade cells are suitable for automotive applications. So another metric that I'd love to see from Tesla is how many of these batteries that they're producing are A grade battery cells and are suitable for automotive use. And what is Tesla going to do with a lower grade of battery cells? Are they going to recycle them or use them elsewhere? I'd love to know that answer because that's really important as well. And I haven't got any data on that just yet. But nonetheless, it's encouraging that Tesla's 4680 production scrap rate is down at Gigafactory Texas. Drew Baglino also mentioned the Cybertruck cell with 10% higher energy than our Model Y cell started production on line two in Texas. This quarter, we convert to building 100% Cybertruck cells to simplify and focus the factory as we ramp all four lines in phase one over the next three quarters. There's a lot here in what Drew mentioned. First of all, it's encouraging that Tesla now has a second production line running at Gigafactory Texas. And that second production line is the one producing their second generation Cybercell, once again, that is 10% more energy dense than the first generation battery cells. Now beyond lines one and two being functional, based on Drew's comments, all four lines should be ramped by the end of this year. As far as I know, each battery production line was originally designed to produce 25 gigawatt hours per year for a total designed factory capacity when fully ramped of up to 100 gigawatt hours per year. To put 100 gigawatt hours of batteries in perspective, that would require over 2.88 million individual 4680 battery cells being produced per day on average to hit that annual run rate. These next statements made by Drew are quite interesting and I don't really know what to fully make of them. Specifically, Drew mentioned, quote, Phase 2 of the Tesla 4680 facility is currently under construction. The additional four lines incorporate further capital efficiencies over phase one, and our target is for them to start producing in late 2024. So when you look at what Drew said there, it does appear like Tesla is going to have eight battery production lines at Gigafactory Texas and not just four. I don't know if this means that Tesla plans to produce more than 100 gigawatt hours of batteries per year at the factory, or if each battery production line is designed to produce less than 25 gigawatt hours per year and that eight production lines are now necessary to hit 100 gigawatt hours. Either way, this is interesting and specifically note here the mention of further capital efficiencies over phase one, which I read to mean more efficient manufacturing equipment, which could be third generation equipment being installed for phase two or at least version 2.5. So if phase two really is third generation 4680 battery equipment, this is very significant because Tesla's previous move to second generation equipment included moving from three separate machines machines to Tesla's new three-in-one machine plus other factory efficiency improvements and not even counting other factory improvements just the three-in-one machine reduced the amount of staff needed per machine by 20 percent and reduced the number of machines needed by around 30 percent. So it's exciting to see Tesla continually improving the production process of the 4680 battery cell and I'm excited to hear more details about phase two. Now beyond Gigafactory Texas, as I previously reported, according to one of my sources, Tesla's Cato Road 4680 Pilot Battery Factory will be temporarily shutting down for three months beginning in November. In this recent Tesla conference call, Drew Baglino confirmed that Tesla is indeed retooling their Cato Road facility. Specifically, Drew mentioned, lastly in Cato, we're retooling to enable large scale pilot runs of our next generation cell designs. Cato's long-term goal is to be the launch pad for new cells, one generation ahead of our mass production facilities, enabling faster iteration and smoother ramp-ups of new designs. 
I believe this retooling at Tesla's Cato Road facility likely involves installing the same basic equipment that they plan to use at Gigafactory Texas in the phase two that Drew Baglino mentioned. And this also hints at Tesla's third generation 4680 battery cells, which I'm looking forward to because hopefully we can see even more energy dense battery cells beyond the 10% increase that Tesla recently made moving from generation one to generation two. As a reminder, back in Tesla's Q4 2022 investor conference call, Drew Baglino shared Tesla's 2023 goal of, quote, to deliver a cost-effective ramp of 4680s well ahead of Cybertruck. With the progress that the Tesla team is making, it does look like that's going to be possible, and it seems very likely that Tesla will be able to hit a production rate of 32 gigawatt hours of batteries per year in 2025, which would once again be enough, according to my estimates, to build 250,000 Cybertrucks. It definitely has taken longer for Tesla to ramp up 4680 production, but the future is bright and Tesla is making great progress. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below, I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.